Hi, I'm Manfred Schwarz from Austria and this is the first part of SpectroCalc 2 tutorial. It's about the basics and the process from the take of 2D images to the 1D spectrum. I developed this software because I wanted one tool to proceed my workflow of spectral reduction from the beginning to the end. But with the complete control of every single step to find problems in the data immediately. There are many automatic processing steps, but you can also change the parameters manually and view the result in real time on the graphic window. SpectroCalc is developed for Windows operating system 7 or higher. Please attend that this video is based on the SpectroCalc 2 software version 2.0 and newer version offer additional functions. Let's start the SpectroCalc 2 application. You can see an information window for the next Vega Spectroscopy Symposium in Salzburg, Austria. You are welcome to join it. The events take place every two years on the odd years. By clicking on a button of the main window, the information window disappears. The left side is to start the processing with the exposure to the images. The right side is to start the processing on a later state. In the main window you can always open the PDF user manual. Click on the 2D Spectra Processing button. Let's open a series of spectra images of VVSAFE. Choose your parts and select the desired spectra images. You can select via the common multiple choice features of Windows. Two new windows appears, one with the file list, one with the graphic of all load spectra. The spectra were analyzed and scanned automatically. It is always possible to add an image by clicking on this load button. You can resize the graphic window. All spectra and an automatic generated sum of all spectra are shown in this window. On the x-axis are the pixel positions. On the y-axis the 8D units of your camera chip. If you move the cursor you can see different numbers for the cursor position. The wavelengths in black and the pixel position in turquoise. Before wavelength calibration pose values are the same. This is the Y position, the AD unit of the cursor position. And these are the Y positions, the AD units for each spectrum at the X position of the cursor. You can see different levels of the spectra. They are caused by different brightness of sky background. Check this box to generate a normalization. Define the normalization area by clicking on the left and on the right border of the desired area. This normalization is only for the display. The data will not be changed. If you want to see all spectra one upon the other, change the offset value. This value is in pixel and shift each spectrum about this value. The y-axis marking is always for the selected spectrum. Click on the file name to change the marking to this spectrum. Let's go back to the spectra processing. Click on the 2D dark frame spectra, choose the path to the dark frames and select the desired 2D darks. You can see a list with the single dark images 
and the calculated master doc. The checkboxes beside allows you to view the image. You can change the brightness. You can zoom in and out with the mouse wheel. Or you can step through the zoom levels by clicking on this. To shift the image view, click into the image and hold down the left mouse button. Or click on the arrows on the border. The double arrow brings you to the edge of the image. And you can center the image. The darkest line is the center line. You can step through the dark images to evaluate the quality of each image. At the end you can see the result of the master dock. If an image is not good enough, you can remove it from the list with the minus button. Click on Save stores the master doc on a subdirectory of the location of the doc files. You can use this master doc for future spectral reductions. Well exposed dark frames are very important for spectral reduction, not only to remove hot pixels. Dark frame reduction is a subtractive process, and each additive or subtractive calculation changes the ratio of the continuum to the top of an emission or absorption line. And this affects several measurement results, such as the equivalent width. At this moment, SpectroCalc 2 is working only with dark frames, which are exposed with same time and temperature as the spectra images. That is the reason why no bias are necessary. If flat field exists, click on 2D flat field processing. Select the bars and the single flat fields exposures if you have not already a master flat. Load the darks for the flats. In my case I have already a master dark. Because of my camera has a low dark current, I use a bias as dark for these short exposure flat field images. Now we have all single 2D spectra images corrected with the dark frames and flat fields. It is always a good idea to check the automatic generated scans of the spectra. Click on the blue checkbox to view the scan. You can change the brightness and the zoom level in the same way as described before. The red line marks the center of the scan. The green lines mark the borders of the scan, the area between is called span. A click to the double arrow brings the view to the edges and you can control the angel of the scan. Check all single images to be able to find images with problems. For example, a cloud was hiding the object during this exposure. In such a case you can remove this image from the project by clicking on the minus button or you can deactivate it from the processing by deselect the green checkbox. The version 2.0 of SpectroCalc 2 is not supporting corrections like tilt, slant or smile effects in this moment. For that reason you should decrease the span area if you see that such effects are influenced the scan results. The button manual opens the scan parameter editor. You can directly see the changes in the graphic window. Look also at the ED values on the y-axis.
a left mouse click changes the center line position. If you are not satisfied with the automatic scan, you can go through all spectra and change the parameter manually. The correction of the sky background is a very important step in the data reduction. With the blue boxes you can open the view of the background areas. There is an upper and a lower one. If you want to change the parameter, click on manually. Three new windows appears. A graphic window with the background scan, the window with the background areas and the parameter window. The Y span is the width of the areas. Upper and lower are the Y center positions of the areas. The polynomial order defines the polynomial function which is processed on the background data. In the most cases I recommend to use the polynomial function and not a one by one pixel value because you add an additional noise to the spectrum. It is possible to disable the polynomial function with this checkbox. You should do this if your sky background has emission lines of light pollution. The background area should be as close as possible by the spectrum stripe, but not so close that you can see the spectrum in the background. Switch off one of the areas. Turn the span to 1. A left mouse click changes the center of the areas. Try different positions and look at the graphic window to see if the spectrum appears in the background. Do the same with the other area. Define your final background areas. If your spectra are not too variable in Y position, you can click on this button to apply the parameters for all spectra. I check now my last spectrum if the parameters are ok for it. It is easy to see why the background correction is so important. Click on this checkbox to disable the correction for all single spectra. Look at the top flux value. Turn the correction on and you can see the increase of this value. Similar to the dark frame correction, the background correction is subtractive and influences the ratio of continuum to line peaks. The wavelength calibration can be done with internal lines, telluric lines or with reference lamp spectra. I used Argon Neon lamp reference images. Let's load it. In this case I made always between the spectra exposures a reference lamp exposure. The most efficient way for SpectroCalc 2 to recognize temperature shifts between the exposures automatically is to analyze the emission lines of a reference lamp. That is the reason for this big number of reference images. You can also correct these images with dark frames. Because of the short exposure reference images, I used my bias master for it. Because I have also a flat master, this is also used for the reference images. There are two new windows, the file list and the graphic window. Turn the mouse wheel or click the right mouse button to change the zoom level in the graphic window. In this example you can clearly see that the spectra have shifted between the exposures. Click on Align the spectra. You can decide if you want to align with the spectra, the references or manually. In each case, SpectroCalc is adopted the other part with the same shift values according to exposure timestamps.
That means, for example, if the emission lines of the reference images near of the fifth spectrum exposure are shifted by 5.23 pixels against the first reference image, also the fifth spectrum will be shifted by 5.23 pixels. Let's try the alignment with the references. If you are not satisfied with the result, reset the alignment. Let us try manual alignment directly on the spectra. Zoom in on one desired line. Click in about the center of the line. Do it for all single exposures. Now we are finished with the 2D to 1D processing and we can save the result. With Calibrate the result is saved and the wavelength calibration part starts automatically. With Save only the result is saved and you can later start the wavelength calibration from the main window. Please view also the other parts of this tutorial. You find the download link for SpectroCalc 2 in the comments to this video. Thank you for watching. Ciao and Servus.